In this video, we're going to look at how to find the domain and range of a function on our calculator. So let's just remind ourselves what the domain and range are of a function. Well, the domain are all the inputs or all of the X values that go into the function. And the range, well, that's all of the outputs or all the Y values that come out of the function. So let's look at a question that we actually find on the specimen papers at the IB have given out. So it says the perimeter of a given square P can be represented by the function P of A, where P of A is equal to four times the square root of A. A is always greater than or equal to zero, where A is the area of the square. The graph of the function P is shown for A between zero and 25. So we see the graph here in the question. It tells us the range of P of A is P of A is between zero and N. So P of A is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to N. Hence, write down the value of n. Okay, so it's good to start off by just identifying, well, what actually are the domain and the range in this question? So the domain is all of the x values that go into the function. So this is actually already defined in the question. It's telling us that a, the independent variable, is between zero and 25. And we can see that clearly on the x-axis or on the a-axis, from zero to 25, this is where our function is defined. This is where our graph exists. So where is our range going to be? Well, that's the corresponding y values that these x values are map mapped onto. In this case, the p values of the perimeter. So we can clearly see that the perimeter is from zero all the way up to 20. So that's our range. So if I was to write this down, I would write down that zero is less than or equal to p of a is less than or equal to 20. So the answer to the question that we're actually looking for, they want to know what's the value of n and the value of n is definitely 20. Okay, so let's look at an example of how to do this on the calculator. Suppose we're given this question here, f of x is equal to x to the four minus three x cubed minus two x squared plus five x plus four. x is between minus one and three. Find the range of f of x. Okay, so I'm gonna have to hit my scratch button twice to get into graphical display. And now I just wanna input the actual equation of my function. So I got x to the four minus three x cubed. I'm just using the caret key in order to get powers and the right arrow obviously to get out of powers. Minus two x squared and plus five x plus four and I hit enter. There's the graph of the function that we're gonna be dealing with. Okay, so I'm just gonna move the equation out of the way so we can better see it. We're been asked to find the range of this function between x is equal to minus one and three. Remember, this function is only defined between x equals minus one and three. So to just give us visually a better idea of what that looks like, I'm gonna go into menu and I'm gonna graph these two boundaries. So I'm gonna use graph, I'm gonna graph a relation. So my vertical line at x equals minus one, well, it just has the equation x is equal to minus one. And my second vertical line at x equals three, well, it just has the equation x equals three. So we want the maximum and the minimum of that function between these two vertical lines. So let's go into menu and just zoom in a little bit. So I use a box just to get a better picture of what's going on. So there we go. There's our function. And we wanna know what's the range that this function takes on between x equals minus one and x equals three. Now, the most common mistake the students make is they just go and get f of minus one and f of three. So they get the y value associated with x equals minus one and the y value associated with x equals three. And they say that the range is between those two y values. That doesn't work um, because the function actually takes on greater values and smaller values over the range than those y values. So what we actually wanna find is we wanna find what's the maximum value the function takes on on that interval and what's the minimum value the function takes on on that interval. So the first thing we're gonna do in order to get the maximum is we're gonna go menu, analyze graph, number three, maximum. It's asking me what graph I want, so I'm gonna choose the graph that I'm interested in and I'm just gonna choose my lower and upper bounds around that maximum point on the graph. So I can see where it is. It's at x is equal to 0 
and the y value is approximately 5.76. Let's go get the minimum value, so analyze graph, minimum, again, choose the correct graph, and then just choose my lower and upper bounds appropriately. So the range that this graph takes on between minus one and three is it goes all the way from minus 3.84 to three significant figures, all the way up to 5.76 to three significant figures. You can clearly see that these are all of the y values that the function takes on between these two x points.